Jet lag is associated with poor health, difficulty concentrating, poor mental capacity, and hormone profiles that are dysregulated. Well, here's the bad news. Most of us give ourselves jet lag every single Monday. How's this happen? Well, we go to bed at the same time, Monday through Thursday. Then we decide to go to bed three hours later on Friday, thinking we're gonna make up for it on Saturday, do the th same thing on Saturday. Sunday night comes, then we try to wake up Monday at our normal time, and we can't figure out why we're exhausted. It's because you gave yourself jet lag. How do you solve that? Go to bed and wake up at the same time every single day and watch your health improve. Have you seen I was on an airplane? I didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> jet lag without the travel. Whoa. That sucks, right? Do you think that has to do with the, you know, cultural phenomenon that of, you know, I hate Mondays or why Mondays are yes. so yeah. terrible? Totally. It's partially because they, they are physically for all of us. Like, obviously, there's a percentage of that of people that hate their jobs, right? I don't know what the statistics sure. are. Maybe Doug could look that up for what the statistics are around how many people actually like their job. But I imagine there's a, 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 a small would, percentage that already... that Yeah, and I would imagine they go the hardest on the weekend, right? Like yeah. The ones that are most miserable in their day-to-day -day job throughout the week, they just live for that weekend moment where they can just like kind of let their hair down and go crazy. Well, look, think about it this way. When, there's a, when they do the time change, right? When they do what daylight savings time for... I think most states do that, but I think they're changing it soon. Everybody complains uh, when uh, the time change makes you wake up an hour earlier. We notice mm -hmm. an hour earlier. Well, most people, on average, will go to bed two or three hours later on Friday night and Saturday night. So it's like traveling somewhere where there's a three-hour difference. Then you come back and you got to go to work the next day. You literally are giving yourself jet lag. Finally, a government policy I can agree that, with. Yeah. That is much higher than I would have guessed. Would you guys have guessed that? What? 65% of people say they like their job. Yeah. Oh. Um, when they say like, is that they tolerate it? I think. Yeah. Uh, Actually, twenty percent are passionate about it. You know what? So though? Those are the people I'm more. Yeah, but that's in. maybe because they're all passion remote is a strong now. Word, Doug. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. I mean, that's a that's a that. So I mean, I so twenty percent. That makes sense. You that, know what I'm gonna say about that though is what? that there was this. Uh, actually, I watched a uh, whole video on this, and there was this cultural shift where work used to be a, a place where you went so you could earn a living, so that you could do the things that were meaningful, like be with your family raise your kids, uh, belong, uh, you know, as part of your community. And then there was this like message that was, uh, told to us that your work is supposed to be your meaning. It's supposed to be your purpose yeah. and people kind of forgot the other stuff. And so I think there's a, that perception as well. It's like, well, I'm supposed to like love work so much that that's all I want to do. When the reality is very few people are like that. Like most people you go to work and you, yeah, you like it, you don't hate it. You don't think you should work in a place you hate. But most people aren't going to go to work and have this like deep. Wasn't that passion. one of the big movements with, I guess, generation? Gen, I can't speak right now. Gen, <laughs> general, general, generational, generational, <laughs> generational. Thank you. Yes, you got it. Why is that so hard to say? I don't um, know. It, millennials being that they want to change the world. They want to like do something that has so much purpose attached to it. They'll pass up on a lot of these jobs that are just jobs to make money, yep. to get you at a stepping stone to get to the next level. Yep. yep. Um, but yeah, that, that seems to be like a, a trend. Yeah. Now back to your fitness tip, um, complete transparency. I'm, I'm guilty of, you know, jet lagging myself on Mondays for a, a very long time. You know, one of the things that helped me get out of that, I've shared this tip before about winning the weekends. Like that was a, yeah. a, a major shift for me to like, and it, it was like a psychological game that I would play. And I talked about that. I've talked about this around exercise and nutrition on how I used to like give myself the flexibility and freedom to eat kind of the way I wanted to or miss days of working out if it was Monday through Friday, but I needed to win Saturday and Sunday. And the idea of like, you know, holding myself accountable for two days out of the week is not hard, I don't think at all. And so instead of saying that I can't do this, I can't do that, it's like, okay, I'm going to win Saturday and Sunday. And then what I found was it set the tone for the week. Well, I've talked about that around nutrition and exercise, but one of the things that it was a side effect was how much it improved the sleep side. Because if I got up and started my day right with my nutrition, I made sure I exercised that day. I also tend to stick with my routine of like mm -hmm. going to bed at a normal hour. And then on Mondays, I would come in here way more refreshed versus if I was just like, you know, partying hard on the weekends, going ham, and then, you know, and staying up late on Sunday, and then Monday comes around and I'm just like, oh, yeah, dragging ass. For there's the first this four belief hours. that you can make up for lost sleep by sleeping in. And that's true to a small extent, but it's not fully true. So you actually screw yourself over. And I do get the, the occasional value of staying up late. You're hanging out with your 
partner, you're going out with friends you haven't met in a while or whatever. But a lot of times, if people are honest with themselves, okay, it's not that. A lot of the times, it's literally just watching TV late. Yeah. Or I'm just going to sleep in tomorrow because I don't have to get up. So therefore, I'm not going to go to bed. So it's not really worth it. It's not really worth the consistent jet lag that we're giving ourselves. When you look at its uh, effects on our health, on our performance, on our productivity. So it's literally as easy as just go to bed and wake up at the same time every single day for the most part. And then notice uh, a big difference. It really makes a huge difference. Even if it's still, you think you're still getting eight hours, the studies will show that if you go off your, if you veer too far off your circadian rhythm, your natural rhythm, let's say you always go to bed at 9 PM and then all of a sudden it's midnight. Even if you try to make up for it the next day, it doesn't really make that big of it. It makes a little bit of a difference, but not much. No, we yeah. had the opportunity to hang out with uh, Kelly Starrett and his wife today and had a great conversation. That interview will probably drop um, later on. But a, a big meat of the, uh, that conversation was around, uh, you know, sleep and sleep yeah. quality. And, you know, at one point I asked them some of the hacks and things that they use and what it was neat to see one of the most common things. I mean, there was a lot, several things that we all agreed on, talked about. Um, but they were huge fans of um, the Sleep Me Uller system, the, yeah. the Doc Pro and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, I swear that like completely changed the quality of sleep. Because that, that matters too, right? Like it's one yeah. thing to get in bed and then get that, you know, eight hours of sleep, but then also how 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 good of sleep are you getting in those how eight hours? How much REM hours? sleep are you getting? Right. Yeah, like and what I, kind of quality you have? And I feel like I... I've never got as deep a sleep as I as I do now that I've I've used that. That and it's not a cheap investment, but I'll say it's been one of the best investments that I've personally ever made to help contribute to me having better sleep. Well, in my opinion, it's uh it's an easy investment because it's simple. You you get it, you put it on your bed, you're done. Yeah. yeah. And regardless of how much sleep you get or what time you go to bed or any of that stuff, whatever you normally do will get better. So it's like an easy thing to do. Whereas some things require Lots of behavioral changes and, yeah, and changes to your lifestyle and, and discipline. Yeah. That's just here. Put it on your bed. Do what you're normally doing. You're going to sleep better because the temperature is going to be optimized. And by the way, this is backed up by data. It's very clear that if you sleep at an optimal temperature for your body, that you do get more of that deep mm -hmm. sleep. You get more of that rejuvenating sleep. So five hours feels more like six and a half hours because it's more of that, that, that recuperative type of sleep. What are there, what are, what other hacks or things have you guys put in place to, to optimize your sleep routine? Not eating two hours before darkness. bed is a big one. Yeah. And darkness is another one. Big time. Yeah. I mean, that was one too. I know uh, Katrina's like that too. Like oh, uh, religious yeah. about like making sure every single light, like I, I do that. I do like a check and I'll go around the room and make sure like every little uh, outlet or anything that has like a blinking, like little tiny red yeah. light or like the TV, like cover it, tape it. I've just started doing that because it's just inevitably like I'll put I used to sleep with a pillow on my head on my face and Courtney make fun of me and then I did like the Eye mask. Ma mask and you know I had my princess mask and then like I had Zorro. all this, and I'm just like dude this is <laughs> too much stuff you know this is ridiculous <laughs> like I gotta calm down a little bit so I just like want to at least manage the environment so it's just dark I wear I, an eye mask I'm, oh you do? <laughs> I do I'm trying to get Katrina to wear I, I bought her this like super fancy like fucking top of the line protector eyelash fucking thing that like what? yeah yeah it's like the best eye mask thing you could find on amazon i ordered for her Protect and because her eyelashes. excuse well so her excuse of why she wouldn't wear it is because she she has fake eyelashes and she's like you're gonna smash my eyelashes no way those things are expensive as hell i'm not gonna do that like <laughs> that was her debate so i like go of course i was so somebody doodle. innovated this yes. is a need of here. course yeah. i knew that when she said that i'm like okay she's not the first girl to have fake oh, eyelashes yeah, of course and want an eye mask, right? So of course they make them and they, they've got these really nice ones. And so she's like, sometimes she'll use it. Sometimes she won't. I try and get her to use it more because she's like you where the slightest bit of light is in there. I don't mind moonlight. Moonlight doesn't bother me. Street lights. If someone, if there's like a street light or yeah. something like that shooting through, but the natural kind of moonlight to me, I, I have no problem falling asleep to that. But obviously a bright light in my room or the blinking uh, lights on the mm. electronics are the worst. Oh yeah, they're the worst, dude. I yeah. use a it's not the sleep mask I use. I don't even use a special one. I just grabbed Jessica's. Well, you don't it's have like fake this, eyelashes. It's like, it's like this yeah. light blue, like fluffy, whatever. And I just put Is it, it really? on. I, swear, I don't care. One. Bro, I'm going to sleep. I don't care. I don't care. I just put it on. Like whatever. Yeah. And now that I think about. It, I'm like, man, if, <laughs> if so, it's juicy. Oh, yeah. If I ever had, to, if I ever had to like yeah. encounter like a burglar or something, you know, he yeah. might be like, at first laugh his ass off. Oh, oh what's going on over here? Get the ones with, like. The, have you seen the Naked ones with like eyes, eyes all wide open on them, so it looks like you have eyes on them. 
that's that, a, you know i'm gonna have to invest uh, in one now yeah. i think about it i should probably buy one that's like better i gotta get like a metal one or something like, you know, <laughs> like, kind of like you know yeah i think yeah, one exactly. of the biggest i think one of the biggest things that's helped katrina and i too and, and this takes a team effort because we're not we're not super consistent but i always notice a big difference when we just agree to heading up to the bedroom at a, a very reasonable time and not bringing the electronics yeah. into the bed. Yeah. Like, so yeah. we'll, we'll go like, Hey, let's, let's get up to the bed at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is really early for me. Like for someone who falls asleep normally at 10 30, 11 to go up to the bedroom at eight is really, but what ends up happening is, you know, we go in there and if we, we don't do that, we talk for about 15, 20 you naturally minutes. get sleepy. Yeah. And then we get, you know, and they calm down. And then before you know, we're asleep by like nine 30 and mm -hmm. I get the most amazing sleep. If I can discipline myself to do that. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Here's what I'm going to give away uh, for today's episode. MAPS 15 Minutes. This is a 15-minute everyday workout. It's actually quite effective. Here's how you can win this program. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post this episode here on YouTube. Also, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If you do all those things and if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. And then, boom, free access to MAPS 15 Minutes. Also... We've put together a time crunch bundle of workout programs. Great for those of you that are limited with time but still want great results. And then we discounted it tremendously. Here's what's included in the time crunch bundle. Maps 15 minutes, maps anywhere, maps prime, and then the ebook, Eat for Performance. The total for this bundle is $99.99. This saves you over $200. If you're interested, here's what you do. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Hey, did you guys uh, do you guys watch uh, Chris Rock's new special on uh, Netflix? It was whack, dude. dude it sucked, huh? I was I made hoping a it was going to be like his old stuff, you know? Like it was bigger and blacker. It was like one of his main specials. I loved that. Yeah. Like it was so hilarious. It's just, I don't know, man. It just fell flat for he, me. He's, um, he hasn't innovated is the thing. I think comedy's kind of uh, advanced. And, you know, like com good comedians, the ones that are great right now, they take you on a ride. You don't yeah. know where they they're going to go. They challenge you a bit too. Yeah. Yeah, and he didn't do that very well. I no. wasn't. I was really disappointed because. Yeah, but that's never been like you. I, you brought that point up, and I don't disagree. But that's never been his his humor. Like he's not a a yeah. Dave Chappelle, a Bill, uh, but that's a Bill what I Burr. Mean. Like I, those, that's what I mean, though. He has his charisma, and he's pointing out really obvious things. Yes, like, yeah. but he hasn't like advanced. You know what I mean? He hasn't. Yeah, like, but I mean that's not necessarily advancing. It's it's, you're you're pointing out stylistically something different. Like there's comedians that are have this humor of irony, right? So I would say he's more like ironic, like this these funny ironic things that he comments on that or stereotypes. Like he yeah. does stuff like that really well. Mm -hmm. You have your your Bill Burrs and your you know um, Dave, Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's oh. that are always on current climate of society and right. that and that were our areas where maybe we're divided and we fight and we argue and they take you through this beautiful they take yeah. you through a ride yeah I mean yeah, like, you're like talking Louis about the goat though you know what I'm saying the hell like, out of you. yeah, yeah Louis he, he can say like the most horrible thing and make it funny yeah you or know? or you have like Nate Bargatze who is clean his humor is yeah. clean. But he's absolutely hilarious. But the wit and, is, yeah, in next brilliant. Level. So I have a theory, Justin. I'd love to hear your your, okay. your opinion on this of how Why'd comedians go because he's like a comedy. He's just he's a comedy just guru, a superstar. Yeah. So um, <laughs> there's like this. I, I noticed this pattern when comedians do this particular thing. They tend to suck then at stand up, and yeah. it's when they go from stand up to voicing children's characters on animations and then after that they stop. <laughs> like Eddie Murphy was an incredible stand-up. Yeah. Started doing kids shit. Now, now he's not funny. He's not funny anymore. Chris Rock, hilarious. Did Madagascar and a bunch of they other stuff. They sort of lose their now. edge and they lose yeah. that relatability. I think it's more of like, it's a sort of a su success trap, right? Like you get mm -hmm. like a little bit too successful. You kind of lose uh, touch with like kind of like the audience base that you've built like going into it. So one example of that was um, uh, uh, um, Kevin Hart. And yeah. Like one of his like specials. Like I love Kevin Hart. I think he's hilarious. Um, but one of his recent specials, he was talking just about like the size of his house and how far long it took for him to get to the front of the house and like okay. all these statues and obstacles and things he had to get through to get to his house and try to like portray it like it's this big struggle. And it's like, dude, like, what are we talking about here? Yeah. You know, it just wasn't like, I think it's just, you kind of lose the sense of reality when like your reality is, is 
there. I think Maybe. what you're talking about, even though you didn't ask my opinion, yeah. I think what you're talking about <laughs> is, is the Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy, uh, what's his face from Full House, um, that effect, Dave which is Coulier? they go no. from no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, Sag Saget. Thank you, Bob Saget. Bob, Bob Saget right, when he right, went right. to Funniest Home Videos. Yeah. What happens is they have this this stand up when they're up and coming and they're completely unhinged. They're just off the rails. Yeah. Say everything that's on their mind. They yeah, touch they all the edge. third rails. They have edge to them. And then they get big and they get picked up by a, either a ma nas national show like Funniest Home Videos or they do things like Nutty Professor and they do family funny stuff or they do cartoon voices like Bill Cosby. But, but Sag is a bad example because that was no, like I one know. of the he dirtiest didn't comics. Shit. Bro, you hear him afterwards? <laughs> ever, his oh my was, God, bro. He, he'd joke about I don't think he was ever twins. as good though. He was still better earlier days than he was later on. Oh. I think, it, you, know what, you know what ruined it was you, if you grew up watching Full House and then you watch this guy well, raunchy yeah, com comedy and you're like, oh, like, like, yeah. And I, think, and I think that's Danny what happens. Tanner. I think you, your, your, your audience broadens and now you, and then at maybe at one point, some of these guys have a bigger PG, PG 13 audience than they have an R audience. And so they have this weird dichotomy they're stuck in where it's like, like Eddie Murphy, for example, when he did Raw and Delirious, that was on the up. Like that was him upcoming. Like, like he wasn't huge yet. That was him becoming huge. Then he goes out and he does the Nutty Professor and all those with the all the other like Doctor Doolittle or whatever. Yeah, yeah. All these kind of like PG type like family stuff. family stuff. And you he he got even bigger. So how much bigger did he get? Did he double or triple his audience? And is the new audience are they PG PG thirteen? And then now you got to go back and you got to do stand up. It's like I don't know. I think comedy evolves. Like if you watch top comedians from the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, you keep going through the decades. You see the evolution of comedy. And watching old comics can sometimes be like, oh, that used to, I thought you used to think that was really funny. Yeah. Like watch watch cringe. old Eddie Murphy now. It's not as funny as it was when you watched it back That's then. Still pretty delirious and raw. Still fucking watch it now. I, I, I watched it recently and I'm I like. I, it's not as funny as it was when well, I Well, I think you're this. you're into some maybe different stuff right now. I mean, those I those it, half of what makes things like that comical is they're they're it's touching. relevant. Yeah, it's, it's relevant. Culture. He's yeah, making fun of Mike Tyson so, in there. He's yeah. making fun of Rocky. Like, I mean, come on, those yeah. are old. Those are all old jokes now. So it's like, of course, yeah, it's not as funny. That's true. Today. But it's still the core of it, it in my opinion, is still George Carlin. Still fucking amazing. If you look back at some of his old stuff, like. So they, yeah, he was but, pathetic, though. I mean, back to, to Chris Rock, I think, like, what I was, like, still sticking around for, I had to actually, like, fast forward to the end because I wanted to hear his take on the Will Smith slap. And, yeah. like, you know, like, is he going to just eviscerate him? You know, like, like what did he set up for this? And it just sucked because it was, like, one of one of the um, jokes that he was trying to lead up towards, like, he, he biffed. Like, he put the wrong movie reference yeah. in front of the other. The yeah, gave away the punchline. I was like, oh, no. And I guess that's got to be, like, part of the, the struggle of doing a live performance. Not Because normally they'll do, like, three different shows and they'll kind of piece it together. Did you see that? That, that, was was the first, that was the first live Netflix stream. Yeah. Did you guys oh, know that? Is that what it was? That was the yeah, first time that's live. ever been done. So it wasn't like they recorded a bunch, picked the no. best one. It was just like he, oh. no. that was the they oh, live they live yeah. stream that that Netflix. That was I, you know it'd be interesting. Maybe you can look up Doug to see like the statistics if that it did well for Netflix and like what the strategy was. I, I bet you it did because uh, everybody wanted to hear what he had to say. About yeah, I mean, hundred percent. That was the move, right? I mean, even him strategically putting it at the end of his show, of like half the people sat around just so they could hear that part. That's where you want to get to. Of course, yeah. I you know I saw Patrick Bed David did. A posted on value tainment page his uh saying oh chris Watt rock attacks woke culture and i was like did he i didn't feel like he <laughs> a did. little bit oh I my mean, god he maybe, about, like, he like corporations nudged he like, nudged it he didn't hammer nah, it no no, no he, he was not. talking about like you know hundred dollar yoga pants and uh at lululemon and he's like you go to lululemon it says we don't support racism sexism this and that He's like, I don't know about you, but I'd rather have some twenty dollar pair of racist pants than a hundred dollar pair <laughs> non racist pants. Yeah, you know? yeah. He's yeah. like, you know who you're discriminating against? Poor people. That was one bit that was kind of funny. Yeah, that was pretty good. He t he bit off of uh, what's his name? Schultz is that his last name? He did the, his Andrew his Schultz. abortion bit was totally he bit off of really a bit, hundred percent. That yeah. has to be probably one of the uh, well, a lot of people were you know that's kind of like in the ethos like everybody. But that, kinda, that exact but joke yeah, though, I, yeah, you know, right. like it I'm pro choice, similar. but you're killing babies. Like that was Schultz said that he delivered it like that too he did, almost the same wow almost the same i mean you, you, that has to be like one of the biggest pet peeves if you're a comedian it's like they someone else to fucking rip your joke do you know who did that a lot mm -hmm. they got uh picked I, I, apart 
Carlos Mencia. Yeah. So remember that R- Rogan called I, him out. Yeah, I, he hasn't. I think Rogan has done that before, where he's called out people that have done that. But isn't that kind of like a common practice sometimes on some people that? Oh, you know who else was known for doing that was uh, what's his fa- oh, the, did the Robin white Williams? No, 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 no. no. I know you're talking. About. Yeah, he did uh, a bunch of movies too. Yes, white dude. Yes, he, he just came back. Yes, what is it? What is his name right now? Come on, help he's me. Kind of goofy. Bro, uh, he got—he was huge. He was a first, he, like he selling went, out arenas. He exploded and then disappeared. And he and he sued his he sued his, his Dane bro- Cook. Thank there you, go. Dane, Dane Cook. Cooks. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. You're gonna get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard Dane Cook used to do that. Like, okay, so I, here's here's the thing that's tough. Okay, as you're you're a comedian, you're at every you know you're coming mm-hmm. up. You're at every small you know bar and yeah. fucking ten people in the audience. You hear all these other people coming up and you hear a good joke, but you see somebody. That doesn't deliver it as not well. Not really selling it. Not selling no, it really well. Yeah. I mean, is it a, is it a bad thing to not go? Oh man, I could do that so much better, and then to build, blend it in. And then, are you a ripoff artist because you did that? Because it's I somebody mean, else's joke, or you it did just, it better than they did? It's not just common practice in in comedy. It's in uh, music. It's in like it, it. I mean, this is just something that's just like people have always done that, right? Like it. it I don't know it. I guess it's 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 an integrity thing for the individual, but like sometimes you'd never know, right? Especially if that person's not going to be as famous, you know. Eventually, you, a lot of times you'd never know that it was there. Well, so okay, joke. here's challenge challenge you guys a little bit then, okay? And, and you see your own self awareness here, okay? Uh, how different is what we do than that? We take all this information and knowledge that we've learned over you know two decades of mm. reading and learning and, and I mean some ideas are original like some things that we we came to the conclusion through yeah. our own practices, but many times you hear somebody I say something you know you hear people you, hear, people. you no. hear a really nerdy guy say some shit and you go he's not communicating that right I can communicate that better no I think and, that's different if if someone else told a story and then I borrowed the story. That's the that's that if it was your own. Thing. That would be the same thing. Yeah, like oh, here's what happened to me, and it's the exact same story someone else said. Okay, yeah. but if you're conveying information, yeah. and I'm conveying the same information that you read, I just do a better job of communicating it. Well, that's that's your job as a trainer, as a coach. Your job is not to research and figure it out. That's the research. So I guess job. that's so. The, where is the where is the re- line, right? So is the line in, in, in yeah. stealing a, another comedian's joke? In are you literally verbatim, or do you take the general concept? I think of yeah. the joke and then you make it your own. I think that's the move, right? Is is there's something there in that thread and like can I come to that same kind of thought but like present it a little bit differently and it's original, you know, at that point. I mean, yes, it's like you're you're inspired and really that's about being inspired. Like for the most part, and again, I, I don't know. I guess I just I compare it to music because like you'll hear songs and it'll just like sort of imprint itself in your head and you don't realize it's still there and it'll come out. And, and it's like, is that really an original yeah. thought? I don't think so. I don't think a lot of thoughts are original. Yeah, you know? and, there, and there's innovation, right? Like, um, like grunge music was borrowed off of what, like uh, punk metal and punk and, and metal, but they blended it in a way that it was innovative. You know, speaking of innovation, by the way, have you guys seen this new clothing that is being designed yes. to thwart yes facial recognition technology? Have you seen this? No, they so- are designing. Like sweaters, hoodies, and stuff. sweaters, and these like face masks that that you could see through. But if a camera zooms in on you, it scrambles and messes up. Take that, Big Brother. So oh. I didn't, I didn't see the face mask one, which I think is stupid because that's like, I mean, who wants to wear a, a fucking mask? Well, you know, that's why. Have you seen that? There's uh, like Chinese citizens in America who wear that. masks, and they'll interview them and say, "Why, why are you wearing a mask?" And they say, "Because we don't want our faces to get recognized." Now, because then their family gets in trouble. Is that China. is that the origin? Maybe Andrew, you know this because I got these two knuckleheads won't know this. Is it, is, wow! Use a computer is, from them, dude. That's well, that's <laughs> well, okay. So I'll ask you. Let's see if you guys say. Do you think that's the origin of why Kanye West started wearing the the ski mask that is covers everything? Like I thought that was such a weird trend, and that's become a trend now. By the way, like NBA basketball players are now doing that. Like you've got uh, eight. Well does, well, does it hold up in court? Right? Like if you can't really like specifically pinpoint that's him, even though it's his voice, like he's Kanye West, dude. He's on a show. Here's Kanye West. Are you gonna right. wear a mask? Like no, 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 no. I, he, I mean, he wears that out in public all the time. So what I'm asking, if you guys know, and maybe Andrew can be searching this right now, is the origin of why he started to do that for because the guy travels all yeah. over the country all the time, yeah, goes know. in China, does stuff like that. Well, is maybe he like, just doesn't want to get recognized by paparazzi. 
Same yeah. same difference yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, same difference be. though, yeah. right? I know you, celebrities have been doing that for a long time, right? Where they wear disguises and you know covers. Yeah, but you're funny when you're the only celebrity that does. That, <laughs> you gotta give yourself away. Hey, that guy with the ski mask. That must be Kanye. <laughs> you're the only dude with a ski mask getting out of a fucking no, Lambo. I'm, I'm looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this uh, this this site, and there's these. You got it, Andrew. He's always been partnered with Balenciaga on the oh. mask. And he says in 2012, he originally started wearing it um, so that people wouldn't recognize him. Oh, so that's what it was. Yeah. So it's a Balenciaga is the one that made that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Isn't that the place? No, the, yeah, that is a weird kid. Yeah, but he had, he broke off from them. You know yeah. that, right? That's yeah, all, yeah, yeah. That's all. So so uh, I'm looking at this right now, and they do have these, these very interesting, clear-looking masks that makes you unrecognizable by facial recognition. Yeah, but don't you, that's stupid, I think. Like it's a literally, but the 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 garments, like the sweaters that just have like design. That's cool too. That's cool to me. Yeah, because that like it scrambles the the face recognition recognition recognition. Thank I got you. you guys. I, okay. caught I know, right? I, I caught. Justin's. I gave you the bug, dude. Yeah, I caught Justin. Sorry. Thing. Yeah, but I, I think Gen this is generational. <laughs> I, you know what I think is cool about this is that this is an example of uh, market response to things that people don't like. So yeah. a lot of people are like, hey, I don't want facial recognition uh, technology to pick me up when I'm walking down the street or whatever. I don't want to, you know, I want to remain somewhat anonymous for whatever reason. So the market comes up with solutions like this. Is this going to work that, for our 15 minute cities? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Hey, oh, explain the, explain the 15 minute cities that they're trying to do. So I, if I, if I read it correctly, it's I like, I need to read more, but yeah. So isn't it like they're, they're trying to basically put some sort of a tax on, how far you travel and to what an, time you can travel. It's just, it's like a control feature of like, uh, and it, I think they wrap it under the guise of um, climate change. Yeah. Like, like less carbon footprint when you have like certain people traveling and it's like, you sort of acknowledge that uh, there's, there's windows of, um, so we can put less footprint out. I have no idea how they're packaging and marketing this, but to me, it just all sounds if, like control. Did you know about this, Doug? I've heard about it, but I don't yeah. know the details. If they could find a way to control people and for people to welcome the control under the guise of it makes us safer, they will. This has always been this way. So if they can sell you that this saves us, this makes us safer, this is good for us, we just need to go through your email. Mm -hmm. We just need to read your texts, we ju which they do now, right? We just need to listen to your phone calls. We just need to look at your face and recognize people walking on the street. We just need to limit how far you could travel, what kind of car you could drive. If you use a gas stove, like what they're doing is slowly controlling people to the point where they have full control. And meanwhile, people are are just welcoming it. Yes, but please. Are you guys make us okay? Are you guys noticing this? Okay, uh, this happened last night. Katrina and I are talking. Katrina and I are talking something. Uh, talking about this I want, uh, for my birthday this year, November. Um, the Las Vegas for the first time. I don't know if you guys know this. Like F one racing is racing the streets of Las Vegas. Oh wow! Oh, they're so, doing that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Here? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, in Las Vegas, that's happening. So I'm like planning this. You want to go there? Yeah, I'm trying to plan this trip with my friends, and, and we're ta I'm talking. So F one, F one, F one. I'm talking in our room. Are we in the friend? In my team. Yeah, my I, like, yeah. I feel like I never. <laughs> I didn't get that text. Did actually, you get that text? No. <laughs> hey, the truth is. My, it might be you guys because my other friends are going to be able to afford it. We're in the F1. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm planning it with them, but it's like, He's you know, like they're in the I'm F1. Gonna, we're in the yeah, F1. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be able to bring them, bro. It's crazy expensive. He's, like gonna, crazy. He's expensive. Like, you guys can come, but you got to pay for my other friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. that's the deal. You, you guys get pit passes. I'm, I'm like, we'll should the, I buy a new car or should I go see this thing? You know, so it's like how how over that expensive. Yeah, dude, it's like over the top, especially if you want to actually sit in like good seats and the hotel room, of course, that night or whatever with that. But anyways, we're saying F1 like crazy, and all of a sudden on my TV populates like Netflix. It's recommending me the F1. I'm talking to Katrina about something else, and before I can Google search it, now I know Google has the ability of whatever, you know, that thing where it finishes your sentence, where it, yeah. you know, and, and I know how that works. It works like the five most populated things yep. when you put a word in, but I'm not even done with the first word, and it gives me my Google search like yep. sometimes. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're listening. Like, they, I open it, it's and it's proven. like recommended. No, I'm like, whoa, it's, that's way too good. It is proven that they're listening, and yeah. that what they've admitted to is they're listening for keywords and phrases mm -hmm. so they could better tailor things like advertising and content. So people think, well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong. Who Which cares? is why we're Wasn't not- that just the Supreme Court ruling uh, that uh, uh, 
basically absolved any uh, further investigation into uh, intelligence agencies' uh, active listening oh, on the public. Yeah, they said that the if the information got out, it would damage national security too much. This is what happens when you get so far down the rabbit hole, you get it's so bad that then releasing the information becomes more dangerous. <laughs> That's what we're at right now. That's like, where we're at. So uh, no, so here's the problem: private companies are definitely listening. My phone's. It happened today. We interviewed. Kelly Starrett on the show. I have never once in my entire life seen an ad with Kelly Starrett on my phone, on Facebook, ever. Hmm. We're talking to him. I said his name, pull up Facebook afterwards, boom, he pops up. Okay. Yeah. It's not a coincidence. It's 100% they're listening. Here's the, the problem with it. The problem is government has backdoor access to all this stuff. So by proxy, they're using private companies to follow people around, watch what they're doing, hear what they're saying, and that's dangerous precedent. <clears throat> Very, very dangerous. Movie. I still think Minority Report was the most accurate, like, sci fi movie. Oh. Remember when he was walking down the street and all the ads? All these ads would yeah. pop at him and, like, so the cool. holograms. Would, like, I guarantee we're headed that direction. I mean, I think yeah. we already are. I mean, look how close, like, to your point. Like, your fo if your phone, which is in your pocket all the time, it's not going to be that ha far fetched for, like, advertising to start to change as you as you go dude, by it it's so, so invasive think, dude. well you just oh. wait till uh till they connect because they wasn't who was it that was trying to buy what was the watch what's the fitbit right is that the watch that you wear or, or the, that measures your, yeah yeah okay yeah. Your, your who was Apple trying watch. to buy them and they tried to put a stop on it was it google oh yeah okay google. so you just wait till a tech company that collects data partners with another tech company that measures things like heart rate uh, your, your, you know, how, how your body temperature, pupil dilation, like all these metrics that will allow you to objectively measure if someone's excited, if they're scared, if they're happy, if they're whatever. And then you pair that with a company that tries to influence you. Apple now, watches are Apple, there, dude. That's why, bro. That's why I have Apple stock, bro. That's why Apple. <laughs> dude, is Apple is. Hey, Adam's already, like, that's why I buy stock. That's why I buy Apple stock. Dude. That's why most of my portfolio is Apple now. They've incorporated that in yeah. the, the latest watch, and yeah. they said it's like really producing like pretty accurate results. Yeah, I was like mind blown because it's they, they don't even need like that um, needle anymore. Yeah. So think about like how it'll be able to target you with. Uh, news articles and blogs and ads. Yeah. This is exciting him. This is not exciting. This is scaring him. This is scaring him. Keep going. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, you're a little deficient in these uh, nutrients. You might want to stop at this um, store real yeah, quick and pick food. up some food. And like, dude, whatever it is, like it's just gonna read you and then present you what you need. Oh man. I mean, obviously, it's easy to become very uh, alarmist about this, right? And and think of like how bad this could be in the lead to, but at the end of the day, I, the real motivation I see is not government control. I see not and I'm not saying that the government won't find a way to use it and manipulate it as they do everything else, but the real motivation behind all of this is to make more money. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll separate the two. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What's the difference? I, well, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't. So it's, uh, but we've yeah. never been able to. So, no. I mean, it's just. I'm just what? trying to sift through it all. That's, I mean, just trying to figure Justin my I, way through. Justin and I came up with a good a good uh, strategy. I don't know. Did you hear what we were no, saying? No, I did not. You know, so we're like, hey, let's, let's we got to get successful <laughs> enough. Let's make Mind Pump successful it's enough. A, B, a and B conversation. Yeah. I know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're not inviting hey, us. Hey, you'll be interested in this, Andrew. I'm going to start talking to Andrew for now. Hey, Andrew, you'll be interested in this. Did he invite you to the F1 in Vegas? I bet he did. He invited us. He's in the F1. That's why. I invited Andrew, Chat not you group. fuckers. Yeah, so listen, listen <laughs> to our day. idea. Okay, all right, all right. You're yeah. invited. All right, okay. let's hear it. So here we were talking about this. We're like, let's do this. Let's get successful enough. We're going to buy a big piece of land. Yes. Okay. And we're going to be like the Amish, except not except. quite like the Amish. Here's the, here's the caveat. Yeah. Because they're way too like, what do they stop at? What what decade of technology? I don't know. Let's like say 1800s, yeah, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, we want to start to get a farm and we're going to go up to technology. 1982. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> 1982. 1985. All, all the tech up to the <laughs> mid 80s. <laughs> yes. That's when we'll stop. So we'll have VHS, VCR, TVs. Yeah, yeah dude. Okay, like, well, think about DeLoreans. that. We, we won't have DVDs. Are you sure you want to stop at 82? Yeah, hey, Maybe 90. That's We got to have a limit somewhere. I know, but we got to agree here because what things what things happen between eighty two and ninety that you're we don't need any boy bands no internet then because the internet internet's not there yet okay Duran Duran internet's like, not we, so you're Michael gonna give Jackson. up the internet yeah 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 oh, internet. Yeah. yeah right before the but, yeah. but like old school like dial up like you know it sucks oh like so we snail. that's ninety something we got to go nineties then oh you want that kind of internet. Yeah, you get like tell your mom to get off the phone so you can go on the internet. You can hey, print one thing off, takes about an hour. Yeah, yeah. That that guy I showed you guys yesterday, uh Harry Harry something, I'll look it up. Um on that channel that you Thanks said you were anything. familiar with, I never even heard of it. Omegle. 
Oh, Omegle. Omegle. You don't know what that is? I didn't know. So yeah, explain that so to me. It's, and- uh, so I, so I know about it uh, through my kids. So apparently it's a site. This is going to sound like such old, <laughs> such old idiots. It's a site you go on and it randomly video chats with somebody. Am I right, Andrew? Is that the deal? Oh yeah, my god! His name is Harry Mack. Oh, we're Harry talking- Mack. Yeah, I was talking about. By the way, th- th- this isn't my shout out today, but that Harry Mack dude. This is the first time I ever seen him, so I know I'm going to sound like probably an old fuddy duddy for all the young kids that already follow this guy. But dude is wicked talented. Yeah, like so talented. And I didn't know what that. So have you actually done o- Omegle? 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 Saying it right? I never actually used it. I remember when I grew up. You were was, a worthless young guy for us. Let, let me tell you why I didn't use it. Okay, this here. is your reference guy. It was guy well here, known dude. for a lot of people that uh, a lot of people only were just masturbating. Yeah. Yes. So, like you would go on there and people would be looking for people doing that. It's uh, it's like a random it's, video chat. A predator it's haven. Now, it yes. tells you like you're being recorded. You cannot do this. If you're looking for sexual content, go here instead. Because oh. what it does is it randomly pulls someone up. And it's some some forty year old. My pervert. son was talking about this because, like, again, like they're I don't know that age where it's just like all these like weird um, things are out there, and they're like, it, you know, what is this? And like their friends were were looking at it, and that's exactly what happened. You, you, you keep like flipping through to the next person. Some dude has his pants off, and just like, oh, kids, oh no, bro. You know what is it's, the, dis- it's disturbing. What's even crazier to me is the app that Andrew was just showing me before oh, yeah. we recorded. Where it makes an old young. makes an old fucking dude look like he's seventeen. Yes, and you can't tell. He yeah. he just brought so it to me. Like, I put like my TikTok face. Filter, it right? looks crazy. Yeah. So now you've got these freaking weirdos, these predators who are like talking to people. So some thirteen year old girl thinks she's talking to some fourteen. Why are we making it easier dude? for pedophiles? Like, what's happening? I know. Like, like, like everything is like like it's in their favor like uh, uh, like what yeah, happened what it, what it, what, it, what an interesting thought like okay cuz obviously something like this like i don't i don't think uh the person who created omegle probably goes oh this will be great for pedophiles yeah. i think you create a, a something like that and you actually think of the things like that would be the, my immediate concern though if i was building something like that like how can you not well it's cuz you're a happen. fucking dad and you deal with all that stuff like yeah. this is probably some young entrepreneur who invented okay but it. why make your face but look here, younger no no, no okay, gonna, that's some point I'm, where okay. i'm heading right now is that that one and go, I I get like okay of of course some yeah, weirdos found that. found a way to use it or what like that, but why would you ever make an app that makes you look thirty years younger? Yeah, because if you're seventeen, you don't give a shit. Yeah. So obviously it's a bunch of fifty year old. Yeah. So who? Are, yeah. Who? What? Yeah, what? Who are you like, how else is that app used, Andrew? Is it used any other way? Um, I imagine there's other apps that can do it, but this is strictly TikTok. Oh, that's for TikTok. Yeah, it's just a filter called Teenage Look. Now, see, teenage Look. I'm telling like, you, dude. It's a filter like you're just, see, yeah, like, like No teenager trying, wants to try and look like a teenager, so it's only for old dudes. Dude. How do we not just create an app like this and then just whoever subscribes to this and uses it, we target and we yeah. put them in jail? <laughs> like the the uh, like the like Washington Redskins yes, trap that I told exactly. you about the other day. It's a big honeypot. This is, we, get, we get them all. We get a bunch of trucks, you know, and we go like stop and we figure out where they live and we throw them in the truck. Didn't, yep. they, do, didn't they do like a big sting on pedophiles like that where they set them all up with some bullshit like that? I thought I read Well, there something. was that show to catch a predator. Yeah. That was a great show. Yeah. Was I don't think I've ever seen I, that. Although, I mean, you know, when they, when they get caught and they're like, oh, <laughs> like I, at the, oh, I was just hanging out. Yeah. Oh, I, no, the, yeah. the, the best one. Yeah. They always say, I was worried about that. I was them. worried about I, I didn't up. want anybody to actually, you know, oh, <laughs> geez. Just take advantage of this poor person. Oh, here. man. <laughs> Too bad it was on TV because I wish it was like, just beat the shit out of him real yeah. quick. You know what I mean? <laughs> it a lot better show. But I think, I'm telling you, I think China, because China owns TikTok, I really do think that they're this literally slowly fucking with our kids because they can, because it's this 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 product and they're changing the algorithm and they're promoting I mean, terrible well, ideas. It, yeah, it's like, otherwise they'd be running the same algorithm and programming for their own I country. I mean, if they, if they did and all that is is very of accurate. Of course they are. Why wouldn't We I, would do the same thing. I mean, Countries I mean, do the same, shit to each other. You have to. You kind of have to appreciate the brilliance in it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I mean or our stupidity. So well, I, or the combination of both. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And we're st- so stupid that we know it and we still we yeah. still are involved. We're I still know. doing it. Like we're getting that, psychologically like crushed. That the the, the disconnect on on things like that right now are just wild to me. Like we I know we went on a little rant. I don't want to I don't want to rehash. I know Doug won't want to rehash, but the whole like 
all the news that came out around COVID and this and that, and like how there's still people walking around with masks and doing stuff like that. It's like the, it's so absurd to me. And now we have all this stuff coming out about January 6th. The main dude who was like the super bad dude in January 6th is like strolling through the entire the, the entire place with cops. But yeah. like walking him through all I that. I haven't seen that video. You haven't seen it? No. Oh yeah, dude, it's all over the place right now. It's going viral. But I mean, it's like this, this, uh, this, this uh, cognitive dissonance that we have right now is unbelievable to me. Where we're being proven and shared and told these yeah. things, and yet still just uh, all, all the villains it? and in in you know crazy like emergency th like everything that that was being promoted so heavily is completely opposite. Look, it's this is uh, COVID, I'll, I'll January six, TikTok. I mean, all these look, things. I go. You don't have to go. You can go back. You can go back to to any emergency, any scary time. Look, it's this is not uh, this is not new. What I'm about to say, but under the guise of emergency and fear. Uh, things tend to get passed that would not get passed otherwise. Uh, Hitler did this. Hitler achieved total power. He got elected, by the way, freely, but he achieved total power because he... Fear. There was a fire, it was yeah. a Reichstag fire, with a, a government building caught fire. He blamed it on radicals and said, I need more power to stop these terrorists. And they gave it to him. Of course, he never gave it back, right? Right. September 11th gave us things like NDAA and the Patriot Act. Um mm -hmm. And COVID gave us a lot of things that aren't going to go away. Yeah. Lockdowns. So, you know, January 6th, like here's my big thing with January 6th. I don't care which side you're on or what you think or whatever. To me, it's weird that we have a Capitol building that got that easily, it like people took it over like that, like stinky. that easy. What do you mean by too take stinky. over? You mean there That's are a bunch of people that- That's story, right? I know, but there, what I see, okay? And by the way, we know people that were there, okay? I know, I know somebody who was there and that what the, the description that they give from being there is nothing like what we've been told on the news. And then now you see this footage that's, this footage was held. Okay, they've had this forever. This is all from inside this the, the building. Oh, this is the dude with the the bro. Look at him walking. Why are they walking around with? They're him? escorting. With they're guns. they're helping him. They're checking doors that are locked for him. Then they let him wow. in. He says a prayer wow. inside there, and he thanks the police officers what? for being so kind what? and touring him through this place. Like it was not. It was not what everybody made it out to be. I mean, what we were being told it was like the the, the greatest assault to our democracy. Yeah. Really? Wow. Really? The greatest of ever, everything that we've had happen? Like, come on, dude. That's so weird. Yeah, we're, you haven't seen this? No, no, we just got clips of people climbing the walls and like the crazies, right? The ones that are in there dressed up in, in face paint and in buffalo hats. and yeah. I mean, that's the main guy right there. That's who it is. That's the, the Didn't buffalo. He get, now, he, he oh, got thrown in jail guy. for a while. Right? I, I think he's still there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they call him the QAnon shaman. <laughs> <laughs> the QAnon shaman. Wow, bro. Oh, my God, dude. Wow. wow. It's just, it's, yeah, I guess it's all just so too weird to really process, you know, like yeah. the whole thing. It's just like, well, uh, I think people are kind of in a state of like, I don't really know what to believe. You can I don't know. We, it, we are, you know, and I'm not... I don't side. There's this huge movement right now in our space too of like the, you know making money off of these like make trying to make mid men again so like that. And I know the 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 under, the mission is ideal, but there's also a bunch of people that are just profiteering off of all this. But there is something to be said about just like how you know pussified we've all become. I saw that video that's going viral right now from ABC News of the dude that's on the airplane who's making threats to everybody on the plane saying he's going to kill all of them. But and, your dude just sitting there? Yeah, he's surrounded by like six yeah. dudes. No in guys are coming Not there a single dude. Up. It sets, stands up. And this isn't like some 300 pound like gorilla that's like oh, talking shit. Off. Yeah, some fucking soy boy weighs like 160 pounds <laughs> oh, wow. who's mouthing off and making threats to everybody while there's six grown men like right there. Nobody even turns their head or says anything to him. And then he gets down, runs down the aisle and starts no, assaulting toxic, one of the flight attendants it's like you know the guy got on the plane so you know he's not carrying a knife or a gun you guys are that scared to grab him and put him in a headlock or put him in his place like, i don't know I, after september 11th i would you would think that they would get tackled real quick yeah you know like stop the shit because who knows what could happen totally type of deal there was i mean on the other side of it i saw there was this video of this woman who <laughs> this this guy was assaulting someone and she's just looked like a mom she reaches in her purse pulls out her gun and just smokes him Oh shit! Smokes them, just takes them out. Nice. I'm like, wow, dude, that was where was that at? Amazing. I don't know. It's an old video. I'm sure we can find it. Oh, it's old. But he's like assaulting someone, and she just reaches in her purse, pulls it out. Ba ba ba. Guy's gone. 
Mm-hmm. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. So there's still some bad out there, badasses out there. That yeah, just be happened to be a, where, where that's at. It wasn't, it wasn't a dude. So was, maybe you're right. wasn't California. Maybe you're right. It wasn't California. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't happening in California. Know, well, we're supposed to talk about uh, Butcher Box as well. I do want to say this about Butcher Box. There's always this debate and discussion about grass fed versus conventional. Um, I, you know, I've made this point before. I'll make it again. If you eat a lot of red meat, if you eat it on a daily basis, grass fed makes a difference. It does. When it comes to the fatty acid profile, the omega three to omega six fatty acid profile, the the CLA content, which is a fatty acid that's found in meat that can uh, actually have fat burning properties. They call it, um, you know, grass fed meat is superior in that sense. It's not this massive difference, but it's big enough a difference to where if you eat red meat on a regular basis, more than four days a week, or especially like I do, seven days a week and mm-hmm. twice a day sometimes, then you want to go grass fed. Makes a big difference, and that's what, that butcher box gets. It, I just I yeah. just text Katrina because I forgot we had this uh, commercial today for butcher box, and I've been meaning to share with the team for when we did have this. She just made a dish uh, that looked, it's like a meatloaf, but you called it something else because it's like, because it is an Italian, it is an Italian dish because we, she, I know what we call it in Sicilian. I'm going to butcher it. I think we call it a uh, brucioluno. I think we call it. It's like meat and it's like rolled up. So and in the inside is like breadcrumbs, cheese. So she stuff. used, yeah. So, and it's a healthy version put of that. sauce on it. Or whatever. Yeah. It's a healthy version of that. So we use like uh, zucchini noodles instead of like real pasta. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, she used like a different, she actually subbed out whatever the cheese that it called for, for like mozzarella, which is lower calorie. And it basically it's, she used the butcher box ground beef made this dish and it looks like meatloaf in the center of it is Turkey wrapped in cheese down the, down yeah, the middle of it. Yeah. And then it has the marinara sauce over it with the, Oh, it was good. Yeah, do you guys make sauce or do you buy it? She bought it. She bought sauce. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had an Italian friend who actually cans. <laughs> yeah, like, cans. Bro, I invited have, me to do some like, cans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I literally, um, I have jars of sauce at home. Bro, I why don't you hook, to bring it? Yes, why don't you hook I've that up? Had the, the I would Stefano so, sauce. Yeah, I'm, I gotta, I'm curious. I, gotta, I would, I would love that. I got to bring it because we don't eat a whole lot. At my house, we don't eat a lot of sauce. Believe it or not, I know my parents in get the all, red sauce. Please, they get all upset. Yeah. No, it's red sauce. Good. I'll, I'll bring Great. you guys some. So. Yeah, I would, I would love that. So who's our shout out today, Adam? You had somebody, right? Oh yeah, no. So I, I wrote down this. I just found her recently. So. um if she ends up being terrible, like uh, please tell me because oh, no. <laughs> I, I thought Best about this. Adam recommended. Hey, no, you know I thought about this the other day. Like as we were shouting people out, I'm like, you know what? We should probably be careful. We shout somebody out who <laughs> yeah. we like. Kind of, you know, you only been following them for like maybe a few months, and yeah. I think they're so all like great. They're some post some to radical yeah. ideas. You know what I'm saying? They can put they're like, what the hold on, racist? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh. So no, she's it's- like. She's all business, right? So her name, her name's Cody Sanchez. I don't even know how I found her. Somebody else, I think, shared her content, and then uh, I clicked on her page and just kind of went down the rabbit hole. She's in she invests in companies. She she's an investor in real estate, um, and she gives really good, uh, like practical, st- uh, tactical business advice and investing advice. And uh, she's so, and they're all like reels and TikTok stuff, and it's really good stuff. So like awesome. I, yeah, she it wheeled me in, I, re- reeled me in, and then I went down the rabbit hole of like watching all of her content. And so far, everything that I've seen of hers, I really like. So, it's so Cody Sanchez, C O D I E, and then Sanchez. Yes. Hey, look, check this out. Look, most children's vitamins are basically candy with a few nutrients, sometimes none. It's garbage. You give it to your kids, you think you're making them healthier. You're just giving them candy. Well, there's a company called Haya that makes vitamins for children that doesn't have all that sugar and crap, and it's got adequate amount of nutrients to actually make a difference. So if you want to make sure you fill in those nutritional gaps for your kids, give them something they'll like to eat, but also isn't candy, go check out Haya. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash Mind Pump. By the way, that link will give you 50% off your first order, so go check it out. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Chris from California. What's up, Chris? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Good. good. All right. Uh, my question is about grip strength and maybe hand positioning, really just hand pain during pull-ups and hanging leg raises. So when doing uh, pull-ups or hanging leg raises types of exercises, it's my hands and my shoulders that always give out first. seems like I feel like I should be able to do more reps from a back and core perspective. Especially, I'm in the last metabolic right now, and with the 30 second rest, like the hanging leg raises at the end, the second, third, fourth set, there's just like I can only hold on for very little time. So then I end up doing some of those and then moving directly into like the leg raises on uh, 
kind of the dip bar or something when I can't hold on any longer. Yeah, that's a good substitute. All right, so how long have you been um, strength training in this way? How long have you been, I guess, testing your grip with uh, with heavy weights? So I've been, I'm 32. I've been working out lifting since I was like 18, 19. Okay. You know, there's been times when I've done tons and tons of pull-ups in my training, like hundreds per week. And even then, you know, after like 12 or some, it's just my hands are just done. Okay. Now, when you say they're done, is it the pain on the hands or is it the grip strength itself or both? The fatigue of it. I think it's, I think it's mostly the hands. And then it also, after, after my hands go, it'll be my shoulders too. That'll start to feel it. Yeah. Okay. So, so kind of just like... Go ahead. Okay. So I would work on, I would start working on mobility on the wrists, hands, and shoulders just to give you a better connection to some of those stretched ranges of motion. Um, so okay. when you start to feel that fatigue in the shoulders when you're hanging, because I mean, you think to yourself, what do my shoulders have to do with hanging? Well, there's stabilizers in there, certain muscles are getting stretched, and mobility work tends to help a lot with that. And how is that going to contribute to grip strength? Um, you'll find that when you fatigue in other parts of your body, other parts of your body that some don't seem to be connected will also start to experience fatigue as well. So if shoulders start to get fatigued, then it starts to travel to the hands almost. Um, and that's because there's kind of a systemic fatigue effect uh, that's happening. Now, as far as specifically working on strength for the hands, nothing I've ever done in my entire life has ever worked as well as frequent training of the grip. Frequent. Mm -hmm. Now, the key here... Okay is not to train with uh, any kind of intensity. You're looking at moderate intensity at most. If it's a workout you're doing every day, you're yeah, going to quickly... frequency. Yeah, you're going to quickly overtrain your hands. So you can get yourself like a gripper. Um, mm -hmm. You can get yourself a squeeze ball. Um, you could use a piece of paper that you crumple and squeeze. And you want to train at about 50% intensity. And you want to practice this throughout the day, literally 50% intensity, but practice it three, four, five times a day for, you know, two, three minutes. So what I used to do is I used to have a, a hand gripper, um, that I would have on my desk. And then when I would train clients, uh, at the beginning of every session, I grabbed the hand gripper and I would just have 50% intensity. I'd squeeze it, you know, my right. And then I'd squeeze it my left. Then I'd hold it for a little bit on my right. You know, like I said, wait till I get to about 50% where I think, Oh, I could probably double the time. I'll stop right there do the same thing with my left. And I would just practice throughout the day. And that made my grip strength and stamina go through the roof uh, by doing it. But the, the mistake that I made at first was training with too much intensity doing that. Cause then I just fried myself. I got tennis elbow and all kinds yeah. of other issues. I would definitely echo the, um, the wrist mobility um, and all of those drills like reach, roll, lift, handcuffs, rotation, you know, that kind of stuff. And then uh, one exercise too, if you want to kind of work a little bit more on uh, isometrically kind of holding and sustaining a position and challenging that position. I love the bottoms up kettlebell uh, hold. So you would do that like in a rack position with the kettlebell uh, straight up, upside down. So it's challenging left to right. It's challenging okay. rotation and uh, just being able to sustain that and like doing incremental sets with that. So uh, whatever that starts out with, whether it's like 10, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, and you kind of build and progress from there. Um, but like Sal's saying, you don't want to overdo it. This is all about like frequency. So pick a couple of these challenging exercises that will help to kind of get um, some control there. So along those lines, that's where I was thinking is uh, loaded hangs. So I don't, are you working out at home or are you working out at, at a gym? I'm going to the gym now because I was running an anabolic. Previously, I work out at home a lot, but um, I do have a bar at home. Oh, you do have and a I have a way to load. Oh, you do that. I mean, to me, that, that yeah. so I would I would load for time, being mm -hmm. cautious of what Sal and, and Justin are saying, which is, you know, don't go and try and fry the forearms the first time, but set a good time, a time that is is challenging enough that you're challenged, but that you're not crushing your your forms and hang. And do a full, fully extended out hang with some weight, and do it for time, and then slowly try to progress that time and increase the frequency of that. So, like I might do it, you know, once a day at first, and see how I and and to a moderate amount of time, and then the next week I'm gonna add maybe you know 10 seconds or 15 seconds to it, and then eventually add it twice a day. And then if you can three times a day, you jump up there and grab it. But load up, load up your, you, you know, I don't know if you have a, a belt that you can load it up or you can pinch it between your thighs or whatever you can do to to load it and hang and hang for time. 
especially since that's the, those are the two things pull ups and the and the hanging leg ra- hanging leg raises where it's giving out. I think increasing the frequency mm-hmm. of a, a loaded hang will actually help that too. So so I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna add to that and change it just a little bit because uh, I, I I really 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 want um, to emphasize that overtraining the forearms is where people nine out of 10 times will mess up when trying to strengthen their grip. And it's the, it's usually the intensity that they over apply when they're doing the frequency. So, uh, let me, let me change that a little bit. Here's what I want you to do. Hang on your bar once a day, uh, at a moderate intensity time that. So let's say it's 30 seconds. Let's say you could do for 30 seconds. Now here's what you're going to do for 30 days. You're not going to do more than 30 seconds. You're not going to add any time until after 30 days. So what it's going to feel like is this is going to feel easier and easier and easier and easier and easier and easier and easier. And then you add time and then you do the same thing. This is an old Soviet uh, era style of training for strength. So the Soviets, uh, they did a lot of studies on strength training um, because of the Olympics and weightlifting. And they would do stuff where they would take an athlete, have them squat, let's say 300 pounds, uh, for 10 reps, which for the athlete, let's say was moderate to moderate high intensity. And then they'd say, you're going to do this every day. And no matter how easy it gets, we're not going to add any weight. Then at the end of 30 days, then we'll add weight. And what that does is it allows your body to adapt. You don't overtrain. And then you get these huge gains in strength at the end. You should not feel like you're frying or working out your forearms. You should feel like you're practicing. Okay. You should feel like you're practicing and you're getting better. If it starts to feel like you're frying yourself, it's too hard. When you're applying frequency, when you're doing this on a daily basis, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And and give yourself okay. a little bit of time. Now, as far as exercises are concerned, if once a week you want to do two or three specific exercises for your form, which by the way, I wouldn't add on top of what we're doing. That would be something later on that you can add. First, do what we're saying. But if you want to add exercises, consider this. Uh, grabbing a bar, that isometric strength you're going to get from grabbing the bar, it has a little bit of carryover outside of that range of motion. But you also want to challenge yourself with different uh, types of grip. So you can wrap a towel around the bar, make pinch it thicker. Grip. You could do a pinch grip. You could do this kind of a pinch grip where it's more like the, the fingertips. Um, just different ranges of motion with that isometric will give you more of a complete type of grip strength. And uh, that's something okay. you, I that's, would do later on yeah. once so you like got really good. So like carries with uh, plates, yeah. right? Like things like that. So you can get like the different okay. variations of grip. But you so need you're not f- just always like this all the time. Yes, right. but you need to feel good, okay? So you should be feeling good this entire time. I don't want you to be like, oh my God, my hands are sore. Oh my God, my forearms are hammered. That means you overdid it when you're applying this kind of daily type of frequency. Do you have MAPS Prime Pro, by the way, Chris? I do not. I have Prime, but not Prime Pro. Well, I'm going to send you Prime yeah. Pro because the wrist and shoulder mobility movements. You're, I, I want you those you practice every single day. I think that'll make a big difference too. Yeah, and a perfect, that'd be awesome. Difference. In a perfect it's, world, the 90s changed my everything else for the lower body. So yeah, looking forward to something. Oh, and, and in a perfect world, you 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 do the wrist and shoulder stuff in there right before you go do this hang that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's like your, okay. that's like, that becomes like a daily ritual like for you. Routine. Yeah. Little, little 10 minute thing that you do every single day and you can do it any time of the day you feel like it and, and do the mobility for the shoulders, wrist, and then do the hang. You do that for a month and like, you'll see progress in that for sure. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys. You got it, man. Right Thanks on. for calling in. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the, you thought it was too much intensity to increase by, you know, 10, 15 seconds. Every yeah. Week. Because he's going to, he's uh, God, like, I tell you 99% of the time, I mean, you're, you're they I'm, just overdo. It. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to disagree with yeah. you because it's, you're always better off. Yep. Less being, is more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I, think, back workout, I think personally, I, I personally know how to feel yeah. intensity exactly. enough to know that I could do it every week. I could progress it's myself. More intuitive. Yeah. For you. But sure. you're, I mean, you're going, listening to you, I think is probably the, the safer route that he's not going to over, overdo it. Yeah. You know, just, so. you know, and, and, and you know, more along the lines of hand and grip strength, uh, your, our hands have in tr- tremendous capacity for strength and stamina. Um, so for people who are like, oh, you know, I can't do these back exercises. I can't do this, you know, pulling movements, my hands give out or whatever. <clears throat> if you train your hands properly, they will catch up. They, they, mm-hmm. Your, your hands connect you to the world. They're designed or they, you, we evolved to be able to have hands that are extremely, um, agile, that we have great dexterity and strength, tremendous amounts of strength. And your evidence is, I mean, you look at some of the top grip athletes, like rock climbers and gymnasts and judo and jujitsu fighters like they their hands are fine 
their hands don't give out. Other things give out before their hands do. You know, some of the, the strongest I ever, my, uh, and it's funny because I actually never really thought about it till way later, like unpacking, like what exactly was going on. The strongest, like my grip, my pull-ups all were when I was a kid in high school, from 16 to 19, I worked on the dairy. Yeah, milking cows, right? And, and so, and you and you just prime them. It's not so. You're, you're, I'm doing this rotation with my 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 fingers for every one of these cows for every single day, right? That, yeah. that I worked. In addition to that, there was when I walk into the barn, there used to be this this bar like this, thing, and it was the piping for all the for mm -hmm. the, all the milk and everything around. And I would hop, and it was like a routine. I just hop up. And I would just, and I, when I first did it, the very first time it was like just a couple, like two pull-ups, yep. three pull-ups. And I did it. I, it was my routine every day. I was just messing, messing around as a kid, you know, just messing around doing that. But over time of like always doing that every day, milking the cows. And then I'd ever start the work with doing a couple pull-ups that turned into like 15, 20 pull-ups. I could rep out on that fat grip. In addition mm -hmm. to all that I was doing, oh my God, I had like- Yeah, a, if you approach it, just like you're brushing your teeth every day. You yeah. know, it's like, it's something that's like really non-invasive, but it's like you're just constantly kind of stimulating that grip and like doing very- Yeah, I never pages. felt sore. It's so strong. Exactly. I, ne I yeah. never felt sore. Yeah, I you never, don't want to feel sore. That's why it never even, it snuck up on me. I never mm -hmm. once thought I was like, I didn't take treat it like, oh, I'm trying to get strength. I bet if you were trying, you would have overdone it. No, totally. Yeah. You're right. If I And trying to push the pull-ups, it's like, I just would hop up, goof around, yeah. pull up until I- I couldn't do it, you know, and then drop. That was all I did. And then I would do the cow thing all day. And it was like, look, some of the strongest hands you'll ever yep. find in, in relation to body weight are uh, like blue collar workers, construction oh, workers. Yeah. <laughs> Go swing concrete. a hammer with a 50 year old guy who's been dude, doing it for 30 years. Concrete was and yeah, dude, you're just my, my dad. So my dad was a contractor and his form strength was so crazy. And that was like one of the games he used to play with us kids when we were little is he would just hold on to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'd be like, like trying to vibe. Yeah. And it'd be like holding on to both kids, yeah. just yeah. like hanging on to us. And we would just, everything, you got both hands, you're trying to break the, it was just like, and he used to just sit there and I laugh. I used to do it with my dad where he would, he would put, he would just take out his index finger like this and he'd tell us to bend it. <laughs> and like just pull it back. And he would just hold his finger like this. And for the longest time we couldn't move it. Yeah. It was great. Our next caller is Tony from Texas. Tony, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, just like everybody else, I just want to say thanks. Uh, you guys have helped me a ton personally. I've lost uh, a couple of years back. I lost almost a hundred pounds. Wow. Uh, yeah. based upon a lot of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things that you guys put out there and everything. And so, uh, big thanks, man. Like it, everything you guys put out there is top notch quality. So, um, I'm digging it, but, awesome. uh, so just a little bit about me. Um, I just turned 39. Uh, on the 27th of last month. And I've kind of gotten a little bit lax in my eating and my weight started creeping back up on me. Um, and I'm, I'm giving myself a year um, to basically transform my body um, <clears throat> to, to, to get the best, uh, 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 you know, aesthetics, whatever, right? Just completely different from what your stereotypical dad bod would look like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so I want to, I want to avoid that at all costs. Um, a while back, I got my hands on the RGB bundle. I was running that, uh, loved it. I started running it as more of an upper lower though. Um, I, I guess for me, it was, I was more into like chasing the pump, I guess, through a lot of the things. And that was easier. Or I felt more engaged. I'm not really sure what to, what to call it, but, um, but then when you guys rolled out with anabolic advanced and, you know, I heard, you know, it's failure training and it's uh, more of an upper lower split. I immediately, my ears perked up and told my wife about it and she bought it for my birthday and I've been running that ever since. And so, uh, I, I love the program, but failure training is a bit new to me. And so I, I have a couple questions for you guys, um, that might be a little basic and I know you guys have covered it before, but just kind of in the realm of failure training, I'm just wondering if the rules still apply. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, and so my first question is, um, for those of us who have a bit of a time constraint, would rest pause be something that you guys would suggest or consider on volume days, right? Intensity days, I can get those done like 40, 45 minutes or so, but on intensity days, I'm running like an hour and a half almost. And so do you want to get your thoughts on that? What do you mean by running rest pause on the volume days? Because, uh, that would be adding more intensity on the volume days. How do you mean? Uh, well, so with me, like most of my workouts before I, I would always like the happy zone for me was running, 
um, just about an hour or so, uh, if at all possible. Um, and so running the, this program through the volume days and, you know, like it just, the, the time in which I'm done and then trying to like hustle and get ready for work and all those things I get ready, you know, I work out first thing in the morning. Um, my, my thought was, and I, my thought was, would rest pause be something that I could do for the volume days to kind of scale the time back so I'm not in like, I guess, a rush to get through what, it, if what that is makes rest sense. Pause? Yeah. Like, how are you applying? Cause re- I think, um, I'm, so I'm not, I'm not understanding what the, what you mean by rest pause. Yeah. Cause rest pause it, it, from what I understand is you, you do a set to let's say super high intensity. You put the weight down for 10 seconds. You get another couple reps, like cluster sets. Yeah. Like a cluster set. So how are you, you might be using the, the definition a little differently. What do you mean? Do you mean like cut the workout, like take some of it out and do the rest later? Like, what do you mean? Uh, no, no, I'll, sorry. I'll explain. So, um, basically I'm, I'm carrying my sets to like one to two reps from failure, resting for, you know, 20 to 30 seconds or so, and then going back at it, but bringing the rep count down for the, the subsequent uh, uh, I see. set. So after. instead of doing like the traditional like do a rest set, period. Rest, do a set, rest. You're doing oh, something I like see. that to get through the sets faster. Oh, are, you adding, yeah. are you adding the optional third exercise or are you doing the two because in the program you could do like two exercises three sets each and then there's an optional third exercise are you doing the lower volume version or the higher volume version so first day one i did the higher volume version and then day two i i skipped a couple of the optional ones just to just to see um Okay. But yeah. So no, I would prefer you do the lower volume version. Yeah. Rather than doing rest Especially pause. Especially if it will end if you were going to do rest pause for yeah, sure. Yeah. I right? wouldn't do rest because that's a little bit of an, that's like more of an intensity um, okay. technique. And the goal with the volume days is not to hammer intensity. It's to get a good pump. Okay. It's to get just a good pump and you want moderate to high intensity at most. So if you were to do that, Sal, okay, it, I would want you to, to dramatically reduce the weight and then do your rest pause thing. If, if you're doing it for time, right? If he has to like power through it. I would rather cut the volume mm, yeah. because because the the, the, the the reason the MAPS Anabolic Advanced is written mm. to alternate high intensity with a lower intensity. I mean, to, this is, it's more complex than this, but if we go, if we use a high intensity technique, on a week like the volume weeks, then what ends up happening is you're going to plateau really hard because we're not allowing your body to work with different adaptations. So what I found was when you're using high intensity techniques like failure, forced reps, partial reps, rest, pause, okay? When you're doing that, if you alternate it with more traditional weeks, we can really stretch out the type of results people get. So I would prefer you to just cut the volume. Cut the volume. So instead of doing nine sets for chest, do the six. Or if six is too many, do five or four rather than going rest pause. Just get the pump, get the squeeze, and then watch what happens on the on the failure weeks. And believe me, that's that's where you'll get the more consistent results rather than trying to squeeze everything in because you're 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 time limited. Okay. 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 That, that makes sense. Yeah. And you know, most people have a tendency to want to and this was a debate. I'll be honest with you, this was a debate in the studio when I when I presented the program to the guys. They were like, why are you even putting in optional, you know, extra sets? That's right. Because mm-hmm. everyone's going to do knew, that. That's exactly what I said. I, I, knew they, I knew they would and all eight, gravitate towards it. Yeah, and 85 to 90% of everyone is going to do better without them. Yeah. And uh, so it was a big debate back and forth. And I'm, I'm realizing they were right. I probably shouldn't have put them in there because people tend to want to do the more the higher volume version thinking that it'll give them better results. But vast majority of people will get better results doing the lower, lower volume version. I see Okay. Okay. You have some more questions? Okay. Uh, because I see you wrote yeah. a few up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so my next question is is when you when you're running a program that uh, that implements failure training, um, when it comes to progressive overloading, does it make more sense to slow the the reps down? Um, you know, like, you know, maybe maybe stay at the same weight for a longer period of time, but but work more on the tempo side, or does it make more sense to like increase your weight every like, week? I you like, know, two and a half. To I, five like pounds, that, depending I like that. I like that. I like that question. No, you, I like that question a lot. We yeah, just talked about this the other day, and 100%. we would. So if we were training you, I would I would mess with your tempo first because here's the thing. Like, and, and this all depends on the experience level, how long I've been training somebody. But I would always manipulate tempo 
before I add more weight to the bar because I, I I'm I'm a stickler with my clients about form and technique. Yeah. Like I I want your form to be just absolutely beautiful, and so if I can utilize a tool like tempo, slowing down tempo, to challenge you with progressive overload without making the 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 movement more difficult by adding weight. I, I, you're far better off. It's a safer approach to do it. Yeah. You're still overloading the body. Reward is better on the reward and you're, side. And you're, you're going to get. You'll get. Great, it's, so it's not. And you're not sacrificing results. So if, if you had two people, one guy added five pounds, the other guy slowed down his tempo. They were get. They're, they're going to get the same muscle growth and strength results. Yeah. The difference is the tempo guy is going to have way better technique, form, less risk of injury. Now there is a. There is a cap to this. So mm -hmm. obviously you're not going to go and do a 30 second rep. So typically what I'll do is I'll take somebody from, you know, traditional tempo and I'll work them more towards a four second negative after four or five second negative. You're good. Then I'll add weight. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, but most people don't, excessive. most people don't even do that. That's, That's why right. I, yeah. I always love to coach there first. Now, if you're somebody who's actually for the last year, two years, you've been doing everything Four two two to a T. I might not. Then I might add load to you because you're probably moving really slow and controlled, and you probably got pretty damn good form everywhere. Yeah. But most people, I, I, you've probably heard me on the podcast say yeah. every time I walk in a gym, I can't find one person doing a true four two two. Mm -hmm. So if that if mm -hmm. that's if that's still in the if that's still in your tool belt, I'm using that shit first until you've used that up, and then I'm gonna load. Yeah, you. if you're if you're doing like most people do like a two one two, and then you're like, oh my god, I could add five pounds to the bar. Go four two two. Yeah. And then the next week, if you're like, wow, I could add five pounds of bar with 422, now you can add weight. People don't realize how challenging and, and, and effective that is. Yeah. So that's such a great uh, thing to bring. Yeah, because you know, because here's the, one of, the, one of the, the drawbacks. I don't know if this sounds like a drawback. It's going to sound more like a sales, sales pitch. But one of the drawbacks to training with failure properly is the strength gains come fast and furious. And, and now why is that a drawback? Because people tend to want to add weight to the bar before perfecting their form. So the risk of injury tends to be higher. I, I experienced it myself recently, just putting the program together. I was just loading the bar and getting excited, and then I yeah, tweak my hip a little bit, my knee a little bit. So you're on point. I go whatever your tempo is, bring it to four two two, and then the following week, if that feels too easy, then you add weight. Okay. So the same rules apply for both the volume and intensity weeks. Yeah. In fact, the volume weeks, I don't give. I don't care what's on the bar. I don't care about how much weight is on the bar. I'm trying to feel the muscle as much as possible. Weight on the bar is more important Get for the failure squeeze. for the failure weeks. Okay. Okay, sweet. Man, that's awesome. All yeah. right. Um, and then the last question that I had, so, you know, with the RGB bundle, um, there's just a natural progression, you know, from program to program to program, rinse, repeat, run it through, jump to something else, you know. Um, but with anabolic advanced, um, is that a program? Like for, like for my specific situation, like, would you guys suggest that I just run this for a year? Because like when I look at it, I feel like it has so many components. You know, you got your mobility, you've got you know the you know the, the strength, the hypertrophy. Like I feel like there's so many components within this thing that I'm you know I'm just curious. Like, would I be shooting myself in the foot by sticking with this program, um, or should I consider like a next step after this? Yeah, if you're okay, so this is a, this is a good question because yeah. it gets real tempting yeah. when you follow a program and you see like really amazing gains. But every program, uh, every program has a weakness, and that's true for all programs, including Maps Anabolic Advanced. The closest one that doesn't is Mass Performance. Mass Performance mm -hmm. is close, but what's the weakness of Mass Performance? Might be like the bodybuilding side, right? right. You're not going to build and sculpt, a bit low, yeah. right? So I would go. You could do Anabolic Advanced twice in a row, but I would follow that uh, with Performance, and then you can jump back on if you want, or you could go Anabolic Advanced back to Anabolic. Then you could go back to anabolic advance, but I would throw performance in there, you know, this year at least once. Yeah, I would because interrupt. yeah, because uh, otherwise you're going to notice some mobility issues. Yeah, you want to make sure that your joints are going to, um, you know, be strong and and supporting you properly. So, um, you know, being in in the same plane of motion a bit too long, and this is what happens a lot of times when we get it, especially uh, a lot of these programs where we're doing a lot of the compound lifts. Um, you know, inevitably it, repetitive stress, we're just going to keep experiencing yep. that, which is then going to lead to problematic issues down the road. So to be able to address that with multiplanar movement and also expressing, you know, your joints full potential, you want to do a program that's going to do that. I'm, I'm always a fan of, of, of testing these boundaries and, and becoming more self-aware of the things that the guys are alluding to right now.
So I wouldn't be against you like trying it, but then I would also caution you like, okay, as you're doing this program over and over, be very aware. Like how, you know, how, how do your hips feel? How do your shoulders feel? How do you, how do you start paying attention to your joints? And if they're starting to talk to you, the probably the reason why they're talking to you is you are, you're missing out on some of the benefits that you get in performance. Like Justin's saying, moving in different planes like that, challenging rotation. That's not, even though we do have mobility in there, which that's good. And it, it'll, it'll help mitigate some of that for somebody who could probably get away with running it a little longer. Yeah. It's not at the same capacity as something like performance, which is very well, also movement. loading it right. So yeah. you're strength training that rotation yes. instead of just yeah expressing it. And that and and for a guy that's your age, our age, that stuff really starts to matter. You know, I always because I, I typically lean towards a an advanced anabolic or an aesthetic type program because it, that's what I like. But I always know when I'm missing out on like my yeah. rotational movements and stuff. In fact literally yesterday's workout like the way i started was these lunges with a bar with a a um what's our little sticks mobility stick behind my shoulders and i'd take deep long strides completely open up because i i recognize that i've lost this ability to rotate really far just from neglecting it for a couple months well it's been more like six months of neglecting it and so i've modified my program and i've added these lunges with these with rotation in it to incorporate that because I know I've been neglecting it. Yeah. So you got to pay attention to that stuff. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Those are the three main questions that I had. So awesome. Right yeah. on Tony. You're good, Tony. Thanks man. Hey, hey yeah. are you in our forum? I'm not. All right. Yeah. We're, we're going to put you in the forum. I, I want to follow up on this. You said you gave yourself a year goal. I want to see what happens year, uh, towards yeah, this yeah. year. Stay in touch with us. Awesome. Thanks man. Keep killing it, man. Awesome. Thank you guys. Take it easy. Those are all really good questions. Really good questions. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love that he asked the tempo question. Oh yeah, all yeah. All, yeah. all great great questions. Because that's a, that takes some self awareness too. I, I still fall fall to it. You know, I'll do a weight and I'll be like, oh wow, I could add weight to the bar. But if I'm like self aware, right? bro, yes. everybody does. That's why the gym. I, I swear to God, it's like one of my favorite things to make people stick to. I would, you know, and maybe it's because you guys were more like strength guys. And yeah. I never cared about that. I always like I always I always went on form, technique, tempo yeah. direction, mm -hmm. because I always liked. Um, I always looked at, and this is obviously, of course, the kind of bodybuilder in me, the like working out like as an art form, right? And I always wanted like all the exercise I did. I wanted to like to look yeah. the best. I wanted mm -hmm. you to like see the way I move the weight and stuff like that, and it just looked well. That's still in performance end too. Like I'm like super stringent on my technique and like making sure it's sharp and my lines yeah. are perfect, and that's that all matters. I, I, yeah. And it's a, you I know, just want to lift more weight. Than yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people are that's that true, way. Hey, yeah, but that's okay. I mean, right? that's that's another, that's most like most people are like that. Like, yeah. but uh, man, I just, and same thing for like, man, I, I think it's like one of the most attractive qualities is to like to watch Katrina exercise, like to see her move in a squat or like seeing a woman with like beautiful form yeah, is such an attractive quality because I like that, you know? Totally. Our next caller is Jenna from Ohio. Hey, Jenna. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I just want to say thank you, kind of like everyone does, because you guys have really changed my life um, with getting me into weightlifting and realizing that I can be strong. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. So I'm going to kind of read from my question with maybe a couple details, I guess. I realized I should have put in there, but um, I'm 35 years old. I'm about five foot eight, 150 pounds. I've been weightlifting consistently for about two years. Um, so previously I was a rower in college. And then after college, I kind of did distance running um, like 25 kilometer trail runs um, before finding weightlifting. And I kind of fell into that because I, broke my leg in 2020 on a run and then was like, well, I can't run. I need to do something. So I started weightlifting and then got back into um, running to finish up some races I had started, already signed up for. Um, but since then, um, when I started listening to you guys, I've done max anabolic, I've done performance, power lift, suspension, aesthetic, and then I'm currently doing max 15 feet advanced version. Um, and I had Honestly, my best results were with, with aesthetic. Like I noticed such a change in my physique with that. Um, and now I'm in phase three of MAPS 15 and I'm just feeling like constantly tired and sore. And I've been sick like several times in a row where I had like a cold and then strep throat and then another cold. And so I've kind of got this feeling that maybe I'm overtraining, but like, should I be taking it easier during my workouts or taking some rest days? And I guess I'm 
wondering if that makes sense, where I did aesthetic, which was a really high volume program and felt great. And now I feel like I'm doing a lower volume program and I feel terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you might be hammering it a bit too hard. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's annoying. Yeah. I got some questions for you. Yeah. I need, I need to know more information. Uh, when you broke your leg running, how did you break your leg? Uh, I was, it was muddy. It was a trail run and I like rolled my ankle and kind of fell down and broke it like right above the ankle. Okay. And have you ever had like, uh, uh, osteo, have you ever checked your bone density? Uh, have you ever had any change, any hormone issues or issues with anything like anything like hair falling out, nails feeling weak, hot, cold intolerance, anything like that? No, I mean, I think my hormones are really good. Okay. Um, they, I had, when I had x-rays for the leg, like they, everything was great okay. other than I had broken my ankle area. Okay. So, I, so I, I still have more questions. Do yeah. you, do you notice like, okay, when you cause you're right. Uh, aesthetic is a, a, a ton more volume than maps 15. So the likelihood of us under uh, over training um, is is less likely mm -hmm. unless we have other things going on. One, I'd be interested in what do you notice different in your life currently at the time? Now, what you, we do have to factor this in. It is winter time. Lots of colds, lots of sicknesses is going around. So that that is a, a potential factor. Uh, one, what is like some of the uh, do you have other stress outside of training, working out? Do you notice when you do something like Maps 15, which is mainly just a couple barbell lifts versus Maps Aesthetic, which is more bodybuilder-esque focus, do you train differently? Like, do you tend to like really load the bar up on the barbell movements? And then when you were doing Maps Aesthetic, were you more like focused on the squeeze and the pump? Like, how are you training differently when you approach the weights? And then also other outside factors in your life right now, is anything different? So I think I realized kind of after this, that one thing that's been like really different is starting kind of around the new year, um, I started, I've had like a long history of gut issues and I kind of like mm. that had a lot of trouble there. So I think that that's maybe one thing contributing, um, where I've been seeing a couple of doctors about it and I'm starting to feel better, but I've definitely been like the last couple of months been struggling with gut issues. Jenna, there, that, that's, we, there we go. That's, it's not, it's not one thing contributing. That is the thing. Yeah. 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 So you have a hit, look, you were a rower, sense a runner. I asked you questions to see if you were overtrained before you weren't. Your body naturally has a high capacity for exercise stress, just based off of what we've, what we've known of you or what you're telling us about your exercise history. Maps aesthetic gave you great results. Maps aesthetic is like 10 times the volume yeah. of maps 15. And that was going to be the next question that I asked you was about your gut. If your gut health is off, you have a, you have systemic inflammation and stress in your body. And if MAPS 15 is overtraining you, you're probably overtrained without even working out, uh, just for lack of a better term, because of what's happening with your gut. So I would, I, I forget about the workout, modifying your workout, get your gut health in mm -hmm. check. Because yeah. bad gut health, almost any type of stress is too much stress. Almost any, and I know this personally. It's really hard to recover, yeah. Yeah, so I, I would definitely, uh, are you working with a functional medicine practitioner or just regular... Uh, um, so I mean, have a gastroenterologist, and I work with um, someone who does allergy elimination techniques. Okay, yeah, I would get tested for dysbiosis. Make sure it's not SIBO or CIFO. Um, see if there's uh, any type of overgrowth that needs to get treated. Solve the gut issues because if your gut is off, um, I mean, any workout's going to feel like too much. I mean, it can get real bad. I mean, I've, I've worked with people where mm -hmm. a 10 minute walk every day just would fry them and, and they would have to sleep 10 hours a day type of deal. So, but once you solve it, everything's going to fall back into place. Once you solve whatever's causing these gut issues, everything else, I mean, it could be a parasite. It could be as yeah. simple as a parasite. You get, you could do a stool test. They could find a parasite easy to treat and then boom, you feel amazing. But and, it, and meanwhile, uh, you know, back off the intensity. You can still go through the motions as far as lifting the, the weight and stuff like that, but, you know, pull, strip the weight down. Strip the weight down. You can practice the form. So, but the number one priority and focus should be around healing the gut. Yeah. I mean, I, just based off what you did before yeah. Yeah, and then Mass 15, the likelihood it's, it's not the workout. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it is the workout, but it's not because it's the workout. It's the workout because something else is, is, re is dramatically reduced your capacity for stress because you're already at a level that is almost overflowing with stress. And it's probably coming from the gut for you to even mention your gut tells me that it's, it's bad yeah. enough or it's an issue that you're, you're looking at. So. Jenna, take it, take advantage of our free forum too. Are you not in the Dr. Cabral's free forum that we have? Is it MP holistic I, health? 
Yeah, I'm in it. Okay, good. good. Okay, good. Yeah, so definitely take it. I mean, they're, they're in there answering questions too. I mean, they're they're far better about around the gut stuff than we are. So if you have questions around there, or troubleshooting, um, and then they obviously offer all the tests you could possibly need. So take advantage of that. Yeah, because when your gut is off, your inflammation's off, your recovery is off, your hormones will start to be off, sleep will be off. I mean, it literally affects everything. Yeah. So uh, and it's that, our, that's it, the core. Right it, there. This would already be very rare for like a novice person to have be able to say like, hey, aesthetic was amazing for me. And then all of a sudden massive team. No, it just makes no sense. That doesn't even make sense for that person, especially for a trained athlete, ex-athlete like you. You you uh, definitely have a higher propensity of training high, high volume. And then all of a sudden you go to 15 and you feel this. It ain't the program. It's something else going on in your life for sure. Okay. All right. Awesome. Uh, and you know, why don't you, are you in our regular forum? I want to get some follow-up because I want to see how you feel once we get this figured out. Yeah, I'm not in your forum. You are, you're not. All right, we'll put you in there. Um, I want to hear, I want, I want some follow-up, like what's going on, what they found. And, you know, cause you're going to, once you've solved your gut issue, it's going to feel like night and day. You're going to feel like you did before. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you. You got it. Look, speaking from personal experience, uh, I'll tell you the difference I know it down. I know it to the number. Mm -hmm. The difference in my lean body mass when my gut is off versus when my gut is on or, or good is about 13 pounds of lean body mass. That's that's a lot. I'll yeah. lose 13 pounds or gain 13. It's it's massive. It affects my mood. I'm more depressed. I'm more irritable. I'm more anxious. If it gets real bad, I have anxiety all day long. Well, I told you. I mean, I'm like in the thick of it right now and, and going through all of those tests uh, for the gut uh, with Dr. Cabral just to kind of get to the root and the bottom of it. Instead of just treating it constantly, um, having to kind of really like nail down like what's going on. Because it, it, it is. It's, it's impossible to recover. Uh, it affects your sleep. It affects your mood. The, the you know the output you have in the gym. All that stuff is related. Yeah, yeah I mean, th to me, this is really easy to to point to that because of the dr dr dramatic difference of the programs. Like Maps Fifteen is the program I put to somebody because they feel maybe overtrained in another program. It's like, oh, they're like, oh, I think aesthetics too much volume. Or for yeah. you, like, okay, go to Matt. So if she handled aesthetic when she ran that, that fine, and then she goes fifteen, there's obviously that's right an an, an outside. And it could and maybe it's a little gut. Maybe it's also some personal stress that didn't, she didn't share. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something else. It's not the pro uh, programming. And the only thing I could think of, that's why I asked her too about, do you know, do you, are you aware of how you train? Cause maybe when you did aesthetic, you're kind of like lightweight into the pump, not really pushing it. And then all of a sudden you go to mass 15 barbell yeah, movements. The athlete comes in and now we're going super intense. Yeah. But maybe that, uh, but that's not likely still. Cause there's yeah. still a lot of barbell movements in fucking Yeah. Aesthetic. And it's still such low volume. Yeah. 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 So it's definitely an, something else. Our next caller is Connor from Oregon. Connor, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys. Uh, great to be on the show. A uh, huge fan. Been listening for like five plus years. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You guys are great. Um, uh, just wanted to say thanks for providing such quality, uh, fitness advice for all of us. If it wasn't for you guys, I'd probably still be lifting based off of my body weight or my body type. <laughs> uh, and then as a side note, I uh, just wanted to say thanks as a new dad. Uh, I really love all your guys' dad advice. Cool. Thank Sweet. you. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm 28. I've been lifting for like 10 plus years or so. Uh, off and on with, you know, injuries and all that good stuff, life. Um, I recently started following map symmetry to fix some very obvious muscle imbalances that I've got. Uh, really liking it so far. Uh, the only question that I'm kind of struggling with is I've been dealing with some low testosterone levels for the last couple, like year and a half or so. Um, and I have tried a few different things, you know, got on a prescription and didn't see much results from that. Um, so I decided to just kind of, you know, work my way off of that and just start lifting heavy and seeing how that feels. And I was running anabolic and I realized I, you know, I was feeling way better, you know, lifting heavy and then anything else I had tried, you know, libido was up, my energy level was up. I felt better. I was in a better mood and all that stuff. Um, I'm kind of afraid I might lose some of those benefits while running symmetry with the, uh, the rep range that I've been in and some of the lighter lifts. Though I know I need the the work of symmetry to kind of get my body in the right place, I was wondering how you guys might incorporate or should I incorporate maybe a, a heavy lift or two during 
uh, running my symmetry days, mm, no, no. or should I just kind of hold out and wait towards the end yeah, when I get right. back to those compound lifts? Yeah, so, no, yeah, wait till the yeah, end, man. Trust the process, brother. Yeah. Trust the process of All what right. we got going Fourth on. Fourth phase is the reveal, dude. I do have a question, though. I I do find uh -huh. it really uh, interesting that you you were taking testo you were taking testosterone and you didn't feel you felt better off of the testosterone. Yeah, you said you took a prescription. Was it testosterone or was it something else? No, I was taking something called Clomid. It was oh, supposed yeah. to like give okay. my body oh. the stuff to make no. more. I was gonna no. say if you're, taking, if you're taking you're taking testosterone, no, brother, no, you're, gonna, I, you're gonna feel better. I promise. <laughs> yeah. No, sim similar similar story to you, Adam. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, my my kid's like five weeks old, so we uh, you know, I wanted to have a kid, so I, I know I didn't want to, you know, uh, go straight on to trying the replacement therapy at all. Yeah. So a lot of people feel yeah. like garbage on, on Clomid. Uh, HCG is another huh? thing that is a prescription that raises testosterone. But how you said you've been battling with what, what do your numbers look like? Um, when I was first getting tested, I was like high 200s, low 300s. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's pretty low, um, especially for. 20. Yeah. And then got back up into the 500s, um, was still kind of just, you know, trying to wait the process out. Um, and then after talking to my, my doctor, unfortunately, like the doctor I had at the place I go, uh, left. So I have a new doctor and we're kind of, we're going to play around with a couple of things, going to stay off the, the Clomid for another month and a half. And then we'll test my levels again and see really where I'm at okay. from there. But overall, I've been feeling a lot better with the, the heavy lifting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, strength training, it's all strength training, right? All, when it's done right. and applied properly and appropriately, they're all going to positively affect uh, things like testosterone and androgen receptor density. That's probably why you felt the best is uh -huh. when you strength train properly, it'll raise testosterone. But more than that, what it does, is it increases the receptor density that testosterone attaches to. So it makes whatever your levels are feel more effective. Symmetry will do that. Anabolic will do that. Performance will do that. So, you know, any program that's, that's appropriate for your body will do that, including symmetry. And then, of course, when you get to the end, that's when you get to the five-by-five five, uh, compound right. list when everything really, really starts to to come together. So stay the course. You're doing great with that. And then continue to monitor your hormone levels because mm -hmm. um, there are ways of raising testosterone with medications that don't involve taking testosterone. One is Clomid, uh, but uh, other people will use things like HCG uh, in combination, and they tend to find better success with that. So, how's your sleep? How's the? Have you been tracking that at all? Um, you know, I average seven-ish hours of sleep. Uh, you know, you guys know how it goes with a with a newer kid. Yeah, uh, sure. and then I get up, I get up fairly early for work. I mean, I'm usually up uh, between three thirty and five most oh, days. Wow. Depends on the okay. time of year and what we're doing. Yeah. So I work out it's in the woods, so, you know, I'm up early a lot. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's going to be hard to, for the next, you know, yes. I mean, you got a five, five week old, you know, you got about, you got a good six yeah. months to a year of, <laughs> yeah. of oh, crappy yeah. sleep. Oh, so. yeah. But you know, the interventions to my best. are your best friend. Are yeah. you, uh, are you in the, uh, mind pump hormones forum already? Uh, the one on Facebook, yes, the free one, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, right, good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you're talking to those guys in there too. You, you know what I'm going to send you to, okay. Connor? I'm going to send you MAPS 15 mm -hmm. because uh, if, if it okay. really starts to get overwhelming mm -hmm. with the baby and work and all that stuff, like, I have four kids. I know what it's like. MAPS 15 uh -huh. is a great fallback program for that. And right. it, it produces yeah. phenomenal okay. results when it's when it's the right program. So. I'll send okay. that to you so you have it. I got nine. Kids, we, yeah, we should have. We should have. Awesome. We should have marketed that program as the new dad program. Yeah, yeah. I we should have. We can still do yeah. that. Yeah, because it really is like that. I think it's it's a, it's a lifesaver in that situation. Yeah. Sure. So I'll send that to yeah. you, Connor. So you got it. Thanks, guys. You got it. Uh, yeah, it was that one or anywhere was kind of the ones I was gonna uh, I was gonna look into for my my busier time of the year. Yeah, no, last fifteen, fifteen masters would be a great yep. fit. You got it, man. Awesome. Yeah, congratulations well, thanks, to you on the new baby, huh? Yep. No yeah, problem. Dude. Hey, thanks. Uh, keep up the the awesome work, guys. You guys are phenomenal. All right, thanks, brother. Right Take it easy. Yeah, the uh, um, you know that, that's the thing about strength training. When it's appropriate, all strength training will do that. It's not like heavy lifting does it more than. Bodybuilding it does it more yeah, than provide you know. the right stimulus. Yeah, it's just it's just if it's appropriate for your body. If it's inappropriate for your body, you're not going to get the same kind of results. And he did maps anabolic and felt amazing because it was perfect for him at that moment. And it is for most people when they first do it, mm -hmm. especially if they come from a background of traditional bodybuilding, body part split, you know, high volume type of training. They move to a full body type routine like that, and they get those 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 types of results. So, oh, he'll love it. He'll we'll just wait till he gets that last phase. It's going to blow his mind. Yeah. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me at Mind Pump DeStefano.
Today, we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me, it was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.